My name is Bob Costas, and I've been a broadcaster for almost 50 years now. Growing up in New York in the 1960s, I listened to Mel Allen and Red Barber, two great broadcasters on the Yankee games. Everyone at one time or another listened to Vin Scully, the most literate of baseball broadcasters. I liked Jack Whitaker because he was an essayist, and you don't have much of that on network TV sports. You know, I could never separate the announcers' voices from the events, especially the best of the announcers. They were the soundtrack of it. Uh, and while I played sports as a kid, I knew I wasn't going to wind up playing professionally or getting a college scholarship. So if I was going to stay close to sports and be part of it, then I would have to try and be a broadcaster or a sports writer. And I went to Syracuse University because they already had a reputation as an excellent journalism school and communication school. And that turned out to be a big advantage for me. When I was a teenager and in college, uh, the legendary announcer was Marv Albert. And just about everybody at Syracuse calling games on the campus station was using some of Marv's expressions. And whether they knew it or not, they were copying Marv's rhythm and pace. I think when you start out, inevitably, you're going to be copying people who you admire. But eventually, if you're any good at all, you'll develop your own style. You have to go with something that's true to you or else you won't be very good at all. My first job was broadcasting minor league hockey in Syracuse. And then from there, I was lucky enough to land a job at KMOX in St. Louis. Only a couple of years after I got there, CBS TV began using me on small regional games during the football and basketball season. By 1980, NBC had hired me to do NFL games and a few other assignments for them. And I wound up at NBC for nearly 40 years. I also was able to work at HBO. And when the baseball network came into existence in 2009, I signed with them. In the days leading up to the game, you're paying attention to the two teams involved that you're gonna call. Uh, you're watching as much as you can. It's easier to do on the internet than it was for much of my career. You're trying to digest as much information and insight about each of the teams and the circumstances in the league, the story of their season. And now there's so much information that part of your job is to act as an editor and to say, wait a minute. Yeah, all of this stuff is factual, but which of it is interesting and pertinent and makes a larger point as opposed to just being information that is neither interesting nor particularly essential. And then usually the day before and the day of the game, you're meeting with the managers and you get some insight. You talk to those who have covered the team on a regular basis, the writers and broadcasters who are around the team, and then you go and you, you hope that you're well enough prepared and you take your chances when the red light comes on. I think a lot of people would tell you that the travel is the hardest part. At the beginning, the travel can be exciting. It takes you to places you otherwise would never go, brings you in contact with new experiences and new people. But the travel can also be tiring. And living out of a suitcase, sometimes the travel can wear you down. But one rule of thumb is that you want to get your foot in the door. You want to get your first job, even if it doesn't line up with what you ultimately hope to do. You want to build your resume. And I would also encourage any young person to read as much as possible. There's more and more material available than ever before, but a lot of that material that's on the internet is not terribly well expressed. It's not really thoughtful. If you read well-written newspaper and magazine articles, and if you actually read honest to God books, it isn't that you're gonna plagiarize anything that's in there, but reading gives you a greater appreciation for language, for turns of phrase, for various ways to express yourself. The broader your vocabulary and the broader your frame of reference, not just about sports, but about the world, the more interesting and effective you'll be as a broadcaster.